はじめまして。よろしくお願いします。私の名前はホルヘです。読んでくれてありがとう。日本語ができません。英語ができます。So, as I said, my name is Jorge and I'm a mobile developer advocate for MongoDB Real. Let me ask you a few questions. Have you ever wanted to do real agile development? Or are you retaining some fix in your application because there's some feature that is broken at the moment? Are you already using feature flags, but you're not really happy with your current implementation? If you answered yes to any of these questions, then tell me quando implementing feature flags is going to be your session. Uh, let me start with the agenda without any further ado. And this agenda is very simple. I'm going to explain what feature flags are and why they might be relevant to you. Then I will move into how they get implemented in an Android project. And finally, I will mention like three common scenarios that happen when you are using、uh, feature flags, and I will be doing some live coding to show you the actual implementation of one of them. So let's start with what feature flags are and how, I, how they are relevant to you. So feature flags are a set of constants that will enable or disable functionality while You are developing it. That is very useful because you can have things that are not fully developed and still belong to the main code that you share among all your team, or at least that doesn't bother you if you are an independent developer. So let's say that you are starting a new feature, and usually people create a new branch and they start furiously coding the feature that they have to do. Well, I don't think that's the best way to do it. And the reason why I believe this is not the best way to do that is because features、uh, may need some time to be developed. And、uh, that means that there is no single step that, you will,、uh, that will take you to a, a feature, unless it's a very trivial one. And there are some things that may happen in the way. So you may need to ship some other fixes, and you will need to integrate with features that are happening, that are being developing, developed by other people in your team. So the reason why you want to do that is to protect their code and your code from any evolution that is not finished yet. Some features, when they are Tested when they get, for example, to QA,、uh, they don't get approved, they get rejected. So,、uh, when they get discarded, you have to be prepared for that. You have to be able to go back to the previous situation. Also, if they are accepted, there is a process that takes you from the previous version to the current version, and you have to get approvals for. Testing for the beta testing and so on, in order to ship the feature to your final users.、Uh, so, it is important that you address different audiences like internal testing, external testing, and the final users、uh, in the proper way. So, how do we do that? Well, the goal here is to have a single code base that contains all the code, even while in development. And this code is not something that we retain while we continue developing it, but something that we will be shipping continuously to the final user. That is the key behind feature flags. Well, let's talk about implementation. In the implementation, it couldn't be simpler. What you're going to do is to have some Boolean variable. That you are going to use in order to enable the new code and disable the new code when that is、uh, that feature flag is true. So that means that when the feature flag is disabled, I will be running the old code if there was a previous implementation of the feature, while when it is enabled, I will be running the new one. The idea here is that, don't, that you don't have to use.、Uh, Different configuration as feature flags. So don't use like the 
a server that you're connecting to as a feature flag. Instead, use Booleans, which is much easier to understand. It doesn't get your code clutter, and it will be helpful to understand what happens. Then you can use these Boolean flags to use different configurations, configuration options for the different options that you want to have. But where do I set those flags that I was mentioning, the Boolean flags that I was mentioning? So you can produce a different build for the different audiences from the same source code. That is what you want to have. So that a feature will start being only enabled for your development, and then it will be uh, progressively uh, adopted by the next versions, the, the other stages of your development. This is a very simple graph on how things get evolving. So you start by development, and then only the alpha version has the feature enabled. The other uh, don't use it. When you move that, you have that uh, feature completed. Then you move it to internal testing, and it gets in, uh, tested for QI, but uh, the rest of the people cannot use it yet. Then you move it to beta, and finally you release it. And at the end, you will have to clean up whatever you have there. And well, you may be thinking, hey, I'm not in that graph because I'm a single developer and I don't have QA, beta, or whatever. Well, it is not that relevant. You can still have a, a feature flag for, a, uh, for anything that you're implementing. And while it is in development, it is enabled only for you. And when it is public, you enable it for the users, and if everything goes fine, then you clean up the code. So how do we do this? We will be using Gradle. We will be using build variants, and we will define a different variant for each of the different stages that we want to uh, contain in our code. And we will put a different file with the uh, feature flags in each of these build variants. Please don't use flavors because they are meant for another purpose. So paid versus free. If you're having a multi-brand application for the assets of one brand versus the other, this is the best idea is to use build variants instead of flavors. You can also use the application suffix if you want to have the same application in two different uh, stages running on the same device. But keep in mind that if you do that, you will have to think about transition from one to the other because the data is going to be separated in each of the different versions. So this could be an example of your build gradle uh, at the app level for the app module. And you will usually have the Android configuration. Inside of that, you have the build types. And there is only one build type that is defined, that is release. Actually, there are two, because there is an implicit one that is called debug that is already defined there by default. So what we're going to do is to make this debug explicit, and we can create any others that we want. So in this case, we can have QA and that is going to be for quality assurance, for testing, and is going to have the debuggable uh, configuration and assigning configuration. We could here define a build config field property, which will generate a config file for each of these build variants. But in my experience, that is not a very good idea. So I don't recommend you to do that because it gets the file clutter and very hard to read. And it is harder to find changes in your build uh, instructions in the future in your, hit, uh, in your Git history. So what would you do instead? We're going to use different files that are going to be used by the different build variants. In initially, you have the source main Java, and that is good enough if you are using a single build variant. But you can create a directory for each of the build variants, which will have a source code that is only meant for that build variant. So while source main Java is going to be shared by all the, the different variants, source debug, source QA, and source release are going to be consumed by the relevant build variant. So what we're going to do is to create a feature flags file that we're going to put 
in the exclusive ones, the ones that are um, used by each of the build variants, and known in the source main Java. Okay, that's it. So let's talk about scenarios then. What we're going to do here is to mention three scenarios and do some live coding. So these are the three common scenarios that I'm going to mention, and I'm going to basically code the first one. May, the most common one is when you want to implement new logic in your source code, and uh, or you want to implement uh, a layer in a different way, in this case, persistence. Another thing that you can do is a minor change in the UI, something that is trivial, something that is basically a look and feel or some property of some part of the view, or uh, rebuild a complete remake of your view uh, that is major, that is something that is not just a trivial change. So what I will be doing with you now is coding uh, in a, the first scenario, and for that, I'm going to show you the code. So let me show you the application that I've created to demonstrate feature flags. Uh, it is a mood logger, so it's able to keep track of your mood through the day. And uh, the only thing that you have to do is to click on the plus button and then choose what your mood is. In my case, because I'm a George Kaigi, I'm very happy. So I click on the happy icon and my mood gets recorded here with the corresponding date and time. Perfect. So what I would like to do now with this application is to improve it. How am I going to improve it? I'm going to use some better persistence. What do I mean by better? I am going to use real, which allows me to synchronize with the cloud and even between devices, even with other operating systems. And in order to do that, what I'm going to do is introduce the real SDK. And I'm going to do that using the feature flags that I told you before. So how do I do that? Well, the first thing is to create a new branch here. So I'm going to go to git new branch and I'm going to use realm for the name of the branch. Now that I have that in place, I'm going to go here to the Gradle thing. And this is the Gradle configuration for the app. And as you can see here, you have two build variants. Well, one is explicit, which is the release one while the other one is implicit, which is the debug one. What I'm going to do is to add a third one that is going to be the QA, the one that we're going to be using for testing. In this case, I have defined this uh, build type, this build variant as debuggable because we want to be able to debug this one in case something happens there. And we want to be using the signing config, the same one that we're using for debug, just for the sake of simplicity for this example. So now that I have this created, I'm going to sync the configuration, the Gradle configuration, and I have all my infrastructure here. What I would like to do now is to create a file that contains the feature flags that I'm going to use. So where do I do that? Well, uh, I could create here in my Java code, the file with the feature flags, but this is the code that is shared among all the build variants. That's not where I want to do that. Instead, I'm going to go to the project view and in this project view in the source directory, I'm going to create a new folder that is going to be a Java folder, okay? And notice that it's allows me to choose among the different variants that I have. So main is the one that is already existing and is that contains the shared code for all the variants. Debug, release, and QA are the three ones that I'm going to be using. So I'm going to create one for debug and then finish. I'm going to create another one folder. Now, uh, Java folder, and this is going to be for QA. And finally, I will be creating a third one folder and Java folder, and I will be creating the release one. Okay. So notice that under the source directory, I have three uh, directories here, the debug one, the QA, and the the release one, the three ones that co will contain a specific code for that variant. 
So first thing that I'm going to do, debug is where I'm releasing, where, sorry, where I'm developing the code. So I'm going to create the feature flags there. I'm going to first create a, a package. So package here, and I'm going to call that package with the same name that the original one. So com mongodb.lover. And now that I have this package, I'm going to create a new calling class that is going to be called feature flags. And there's going to be a class, no problem with that, uh, that will contain a companion object that I'm going to be using for defining the feature flag that will be used for enabling or disabling the real feature that I'm developing at the moment. Okay, so this is exactly what I wanted to have. And now uh, I want to replicate this configuration for QA and for release. Instead of doing the same thing here, I'm going to use the easier way here. So I'm going to use Open in Finder. And I'm going to copy the debug one that I have created to QA and to release. OK, now that I have this here, I can go to QA, Java, edit in, Q, in QA the version and set the flag to false. And same thing for the release one. So that means that that feature that I'm developing is going to be enabled for uh, the debug version, for the development version, and uh, disabled for QA and release at the moment. In order to prove that this works, obviously I'm not going to develop the functionality. What I'm going to do is to go to the main activity and the repository that I would be replacing here, I'm going to use if feature flag, features flags are enabled for real, then I'm going to have a print then that will show new new stuff okay so the thing that i'm going to be adding is going to happen here and i will contain the old code also here uh, what it would happen at the end is that i will be copying this thing but with the proper repository so just for the sake of simplicity and having some window here, I'm going to leave the old code also here, but I will be evolving this code later. So now the last thing that I would like to do is to choose the build variant that I'm going to be using, which is here. And at this moment, I'm running the bug. If you go to project Android, you will see that under Java, you have uh, the, the default share code and the one that you have created that is specific to the debug variant. And by running this one, you will see that new stuff is presented here. Let me terminate this one, show it here. And hopefully, yeah, we got this here. So we clean this just to show you that if we change to QA, And we run it again. New stuff is not going to show up. Terminate. And it doesn't show up. So that's what I wanted to show you. I hope this was a useful example to you. You can access the full source code, including the feature flags implementation, if using this URL that you have on the screen now. And feel free to send me a tweet if you have any comments on that. Let me now continue with the other two scenarios that I was mentioning. The first one would be a minor change in the UI. 
And well, uh, while this is not uh, the case for all of us, what I have done here is to put the implementation in the case of Compose. And you might be thinking, well, I'm not using Compose yet. It doesn't matter. So in the case you are using Compose, you can use it as it is shown on the screen. And you can say, well, if feature flags uh, for the flag that I'm using for this new UI is a, um, enabled, then I'm going to use this version of the Composable. Else, if it is not enabled, then I will be using the other one. So trivial changes to the UI are possible and pretty easy to be done. But if you are not using Compose, you can load different XMLs depending on whether you want to have like the previous implementation or the newest one. So by changing the XML that you load, you will be having different versions of the UI. But what happens if your UI requires some major change that you are exposing some new data. So the view model changes, some new views are appearing in your view. How do you deal with that? Well, you do that by routing to a different view depending on the feature fly. So in this case, again, I'm using composable uh, routes. Uh, so I use the navigation controller and I choose one route or one set of uh, destinations or another based on the uh, feature flag, whether that is enabled or not. But uh, you can do the same using the same navigation controller by deciding to navigate to a destination or to another based on why you want to have the feature flag or not enabled. And one final point regarding testing. Uh, some people ask me, do I need to have testing in place in order to use feature flags? Well, don't get me wrong. You don't need it, but it's going to help you a lot. So uh, my recommendation is that you always have tests in place because it, they will be helpful in the long run. And if you do, then keep in mind that you have to test the oldest scenario and the newest scenario. So inside of your test, you will be using the feature flag to say, hey, the behavior that I want to test is either this one or that other one because of the feature flag. So if you have tests in place, it's going to be even better and you will have to follow the same process as you were doing for the actual code. Let me finish with a brief summary of what we did. I believe that the feature flags are the way to go if you want to be agile, if you want to be able to create different functionalities at the same time without uh, bothering the, uh, the rest of the development. So I believe that it is important that you use feature flags. It also helps you when you have some urgency in terms of deploying some new feature that you were not expecting or even a fix. And it helps you to tune up your deployment. I mean, it lets you choose um, in a more granular way what you enable or disable for different collectives. The implementation is trivial. So uh, by using build variants, you are almost all set. What you need to do is to create a feature flux uh, class that is going to be in the different directories that is that are used by the different uh, build variants. And you don't put anything in the one that is shared among all of them, which is source main. The code is modified by using an if expression that contains the feature flag and that allows you to choose between the new implementation of the code and the previous one, should there be one. Uh, finally, uh, you can use mm, the feature flags not just for scenarios in which you are changing the logic of your application, but also for alternative implementations of your different layers or for when you want to change your UI. I hope this has been very useful to you. Uh, I really appreciate your time. Domo arigato gozaimashita. And I hope to see you soon again. Doroido Kaigi 2021. Channel Toroku o onegai itashimasu.